when we're under pressure, when there's some kind of a transition or some kind of a change, there's basically four different responses that human beings will have. The more that you know what your response is and how that lives in you, the more you're able to shift from it. If you're not paying attention to it and you're in that reaction, that reaction will drive your response, which usually ends up in some kind of unskillful action and the other people will begin to say this person is some kind of a jerk or not acting effectively. What that means is that under pressure, there's a whole group of us that will fight back, will push against, will go against. There's a whole group of us that will flee, will we'll, we'll move away from something. Uh, there's a whole group of us that will just get startled and will be held frozen in place, unable to speak, unable to hear things, really kind of with that thousand yard stare. And fourth, there's a group of us that will be coming, will appease, will try to make nice, will go towards the pressure and try to dilute it or try to neutralize it in a way where we forsake ourselves but become overly nice. These, as I said, they're deeply in our genetic structure. Uh, they're what you might say is they're factory loaded. And what we're looking at is that once you notice that in yourself, is that you're able to shift and then come back to being present to the situation it is, as it is, open to possibilities, and deeply connected to what you care about. Now, I'm gonna show you an experiential practice that we can do here, and that you can feel this for yourself, do this for yourself, so you begin to understand what your reaction may, may be, okay? My partner here, Karen, is gonna assist me. Hi, Karen. She'll grab here, like that kind of a grab, and if I'm a fighter, and I learn to fight back, what I'll do is I'll immediately come into my fist, grab a stance, and then try to go against her, this kind of a way. Um, and I can feel that fighting response in my body. If I don't notice it, I can spend a lifetime, a career, doing this. There are marriages that do this. There are business partnerships that do this over and over and over again. Okay. Now, this grab is real, because she's really grabbing me, but it's also metaphorical. In other words, we, we have a number of different ways that we get grabbed in our lives. People will look at us a certain way. People will cut in front of us in traffic. Our boss may say, I need to talk to you, come into my office. Uh, somebody may give you a negative uh, evaluation. Uh, for, grab for some people is people say, gee, you look terrific today, good job. Some people may be grabbed by that. So I just don't want you to misinterpret that the grab that she's doing here is we're not doing martial arts. It's this, if she grabs me and I'm a fleer, my, you will feel your body moving away. That will be the same thing that happens in the conversational space. That will be the same reaction you'll have otherwise. So if I'm a fleer, I will move away this way. Yeah? I can feel my energy moving this way. I can feel myself backing up. I can feel myself trying to find safety by making distance between us. The third response in the grab would be, and I just freeze. I just freeze. Uh, I'm not thinking about what's happening. Um, I'm not reacting against. I'm not reacting away. I'm just freezing in place and then um, uh, not being able to take care of the situation as it is. It's as if I lost my voice and I went dumb myself down. The fourth thing the appease could look like this. I get grabbed to find connection and safety. I go, oh hi, really good to meet you. That's a great grab that you have and I so appreciate what you're doing. It would be moving towards the pressure and trying to neutralize it by being overly friendly, overly smiley face, those kinds of things. Thank you, Karen.